Ladies, and men too for that matter, your choice of shoes will make or break your trip. They need to hit that sweet spot between comfort, style, versatility, and packability. If you can hit all of these points with the added bonus of sustainability, then you have hit the jackpot. And if my last seven months of carry-on travel with a travel capsule wardrobe, including two months in Europe, are any indication, I just may have found that jackpot. In this video, I'll share my top tips for choosing the perfect pair of classy shoes for carry-on travel, and I'll show you my current favorites. Are you ready? All right. I'm Nora Dunn, AKA the professional hobo. I've been a digital nomad since 2006 and my style of travel literally and figuratively has changed enormously over the years. I started out with travel friendly clothes and shoes, things that were practical, but did nothing for me fashion wise. I hated my wardrobe. It was painful. Then I got fashionable stuff that was totally impractical for travel. Everything was too bulky and it didn't pack well. Also painful. The pendulum swung a couple of times as I struggled to find that perfect balance between fashion and function. Luckily, various fashion brands and shoe brands have developed in recent years that are attentive to the needs of traveler, with things like being ultralight and packable and washable and antimicrobial and more. And bonus, they're fashionable. Because if you're traveling through Europe, you are not going to blend in with the locals if you were wearing convertible pants and socks with sandals. You're just not. Today we're talking shoes. Here are my top five qualities that make for good shoes. One, they must be packable. Rigid, bulky, heavy, inflexible shoes need not apply. For these reasons, I ditched my hiking boots years ago in favor of barefoot trail running shoes. But I cover that in another video. Two, they need to be versatile. That means they're a color that matches your entire travel wardrobe for maximum outfit possibilities. Versatility also applies to fashion. You should be able to wear them in both casual and dressy situations. Three, comfort is primo. If you can't pound the pavement and wander the streets all day in them, they have no place in your luggage. Four, anti-stink, uber important. There's nothing worse than having stinky feet after wearing stinky shoes all day and then having to pack your stinky shoes and your soon to be stinky luggage, contaminating everything else. I smell a smelly smell. Or worse yet, getting on an airplane in your stinky shoes and subjecting everybody else to your stinkiness. To avoid odor issues, look for antimicrobial or antibacterial properties. If they're machine washable, even better. That helps deal with the anti-stink factor as well as any just dirt from wear and tear. Five, I like to put my money into brands that are environmentally conscious. I look for sustainability practices that include manufacturing with recycled materials, reducing carbon footprints that are attentive to wage equities and ethical manufacturing. So with these criteria in mind, let's look at four different styles of Vivaya shoes to see how they measure up as the best shoes for classy carry on travel while also being sustainable. Then we'll look at Vivaya as a company and some of the benefits and shortcomings of their shoes overall. And I'll also give you some advice for sizing and more. First up, the Vienna pointed toe V cut flats. I bought my first pair of Vivaya shoes, which are the Vienna pointed toe V-cut flats earlier this year. I traveled for seven solid months with them through various climates and scenarios. Every single time, every single time I wore them, I got at least one compliment. Although I have a few other pairs that I'll show you in this video, these are my favorites. I just love the cut of the shoe and the detailing. They tick all the boxes in terms of versatility, practicality, and of course, sustainability. They're made with plastic bottles, did you know? We'll get more into Vivaya's sustainability factor shortly. I can wear these absolutely all day in total comfort. The break-in period was painless and took one day, which for me is totally unheard of. And I'm really not exaggerating when I say these are among the most comfortable shoes that I own. Now, when I was deciding whether or not to buy these shoes, I worried about a few things. First, the whole pointed toe thing. This is my first pair of pointed toe shoes, like ever, and I was afraid that I would I don't know, look like an elf or something. <laughs> and my feet are kind of wide thanks to some bunions in the making, so I worried that the pointed toe would feel constrictive. On the contrary, the pointed toe is not only very flattering, but my feet don't feel constricted at all. 
Secondly, I was worried about the whole eco-friendly deodorizing insole thing. Frankly, I thought it would be too good to be true, especially after a whole day of walking in these shoes in bare feet. But not only did they survive a day of hot, sweaty walking in bare feet, they survived months of it. No stink. And even though they're washable, I worry that washing them would deteriorate the shoe. But I have put them in the washing machine a couple of times and each time they've come out clean and pretty much like new. In terms of weight and packability, they are super lightweight. They're flex enough to fold in on themselves. And this flexibility also adds to the comfort factor of the shoe overall. The carbon-free rubber outsole is super grippy. And I've taken them off-road a few times on like gravel and dirt paths. It's not really what they're made for, but they survived. And because they're washable, of course, they're no worse to wear. Bonus, they look incredible. They upscale every outfit I have and without making me feel overdressed either. So as long as comfort is, isn't being compromised, then I say, why not look a little bit nicer? And in places like Europe, this goes a long way. So I loved my Vienna shoes so much that I sang their praises in a Facebook post and Vivaya took notice. And they asked me, would you like to try another pair of our shoes? And I said, yes, please, I'll take three. <laughs> so it was a gutsy move to be sure, but I wanted to try a few different styles of their shoes to see if I just got lucky with my first pair or if Vivaya actually makes great shoes across the board. I also wanted to try a few different kinds of shoes since they have not only flats, but they have loafers, sandals, boots, runners, and more. Here's the lowdown on what I got. Aria 5 Pointed Toe Ballet Flats. I wanted to try the Aria 5 shoes because it's one of their best sellers and they offer an obscene selection of colors and patterns in this shoe, including some that are made from hemp. This is actually the world's first pair of hemp flats. Now, whether they're made from hemp or renewable, renewable materials like plastic bottles, the Aria 5 style is probably your best bet for an all around shoe. They get the five in their name because they redesigned their original Aria with a five degree angle inward adjustment to create a wider toe box so your feet aren't as squished up in the shoes. This also helps accommodate for wider feet and, and or bunions. Similar to the Vienna and other Vivaya styles, the Aria shoes are flats that are as comfy as sneakers. <laughs> You'll also see a number of their shoes like the Aria, the Vienna, the Valencia and others have a 2.0 beside their name. This means they've improved them with increased arch support, better cushioning, like better rebound support in the insole on the heel, and also better cushioning at the back of the heel, and also increased elasticity. Now, I was particularly interested in the hemp material since it's super sustainable and it's naturally antimicrobial, as in it's so good at inhibiting the growth of microbes and bacteria that it destroys them within an hour. And the colors of hemp are inherently neutral, which means they go with everything. This is the sand woven color but they don't stretch out as easily as the regular Aria shoes do, which means they took longer to break in. And even now they haven't still fully molded to my feet. So if you're in the market for a pair of Aria 5 shoes, if you want the hemp style and you're in between sizes or your feet are a little bit wide, I suggest sizing up. But frankly, if I were you, I would just get the regular Aria 5 shoes. They're made from plastic bottles. They have like 36 different colors and patterns to choose from. So uh, yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> Next up, the Venus Pointed Toe Mules. The Venus Pointed Toe Mules aren't quite as practical or travel friendly as some of Vivaya's other styles like the Vienna, but they are <laughs> ridiculously cute. These are guaranteed to level up any outfit and they can be worn with jeans or nice dresses. I especially love their black color because not only do they go with everything, but also the strap has this cool pattern. The other colors of this style have a solid color strap, which is still super cute, but it doesn't quite pack the punch that these shoes do. Now, while the uppers of these shoes are still made from plastic bottles, yay, and they're antimicrobial and breathable like other Vivaya styles, the soles are not as flexible and they're not machine washable but they're still super lightweight. They're under 200 grams per shoe and they totally pack up thin. Last up, the Leona loafers. I wanted a pair of loafers, slightly more casual look and something that had a bit more coverage of the foot. 
This is good for cooler weather. Also gives me an option to wear a pair of no-show socks for extra warmth. Vivaya has a few different styles of loafers and I initially ordered the Mina style, but I ignored the advice on the website that said to size up if you have wide feet and they were just a bit too tight for my liking. So when I went to exchange them, I saw the Leona loafers and I fell in love with this zebra pattern on top. Despite the pattern, the colors of the shoe are very neutral, which again, from a travel perspective, makes them ideal because they'll match pretty much everything. Even though the Leona loafers don't suggest sizing up like the Nina loafers do, I sized up anyway. Uh, from a European size 39 to 40, mostly because I wanted to have the ability to wear socks in them without them being too tight. With or without socks, these fit like a dream. And like Vivaya's other shoes, they're made from plastic bottles and other recycled materials. They're antimicrobial and they're breathable and they're machine washable and they're lightweight and flexible. And the anti-slip rubber outsoles uh, are super flexible and packing them is like a dream. up this video with some notes about Vivaya shoes on the whole with some observations, good and constructive. Uh, so you can decide if Vivaya is for you. First off, they're magical insoles. Vivaya's insoles are made from natural herbal PU foam. Despite being quite thin, they're very supportive and they're cushiony. They're also breathable, mold proof and moisture wicking and making them anti-stick even in hot temperatures. Anti-stink, that's a, that's a technical term, I'm quite sure of that. Here's the bad news. I have clean feet, I promise. Like, really clean. But the insoles discolor really quickly, so they're kind of not nice to look at. I tried washing them and that helped refresh the look, but they're still a bit <clears throat> manky. But they're about $10, they're relatively cheap and easy to replace, and Vivaya recommends replacing the insoles every six months. Next up, sizing notes. Read the description of the shoes you're looking at carefully. Some of them suggest sizing up from your regular shoe size, and I can attest to that being accurate advice. That said, Vivaya shoes mostly fit true to size, which brings me to breaking them in. I was surprised at how easily my Vienna shoes were to break in. I spent two days wearing them indoors incrementally for longer periods of time, working my way up from 15 minutes to a few hours. There was no rubbing at the heel, no blisters, nada. And while they initially started off a bit tight at the widest part of my foot, which is the ball of my foot, they actually also molded to my feet really quickly. So I brought this newfound break in bravado to my other pairs of Avaya shoes with mixed results. Right out of the box, I took my Aria 5 hemp shoes on a 45 minute walk. <laughs> this was maybe not the best idea in the world. In any case, I learned that the hemp material isn't quite as flexible or elastic as the recycled plastic material. Even now, after weeks and weeks of wear, they're still a little bit tight, uh, and although they're comfy, I kind of wish I'd sized up a little bit. The Venus mules were even less graceful. Because of the nature of mules being slip-ons with nothing to ostensibly hold the shoe on the foot, uh, I went for a long walk when I got them. Again, I don't tend to do these things smartly or gracefully, and it resulted in the tops of one of my feet rubbing raw. But I'm pleased to say I'm all healed up, I've had no problems ever since. And the Leona loafers had absolutely zero break-in problems, partly because I sized up with them. So they're not too loose at all, but they're certainly not tight in any spots either. All right, here's where I share the worst news about my experience with Vivaya shoes. Dear Vivaya, it's not you, it's me. <laughs> well, no, it's still kind of you as well. After a few months of wearing my Vienna pointed toe flats, I noticed these marks on the back of the shoes at the base. And I thought maybe they were stains, like I'd, maybe I'd inadvertently stepped in a puddle or you know had some dirty water or something. So I tried washing them and the marks didn't totally go away, but they seemed to lighten a little bit. And they didn't bother me too much, so I kind of let it slide. Then I got the hemp shoes. After my very first 45 minute walk, they had the exact same marks on the back. It hadn't even been one day of owning these shoes. And because of the nature of the hemp material, I then quickly realized this wasn't a stain. It was the material itself being worn down by the ground. You'll notice the back of the Vivaya shoes hang over the sole a bit. So I contacted Vivaya and asked about this. Like, was there a design flaw with this overhang? Because it was apparent that my heel was hitting the ground as I walked and the shoe was hitting the ground as well. They replied that, no, nope, wasn't a design flaw, but rather it was a flaw in the way that I walk. 
I, maybe it's true. Maybe I, my grand, my foot just hits the ground in such a way that I'm I don't know, more overzealous than other people when I walk. But I wanted to give you this heads up because it might happen to you as well. I'm not honestly super bothered by it because you can't really see it unless you're looking for it. And I love everything else about these shoes. So I'll take the bad with the good. But if you think this might happen to you, or if having these marks on the back of your Vivaya shoes would bother you, I have two pieces of advice to try and avoid this. One, don't get the hemp shoes. They wear away way too quickly. Vivaya's signature recycled plastic uppers are way more resilient. Two, order your shoes in dark colors. This will effectively hide these marks. And darker colored shoes also tend to be more versatile anyway, which is better for travel. Finally, I want to talk about Vivaya sustainability policies, which is one of the things that I love the most about Vivaya. Vivaya's goal is to become 100% carbon neutral brand, and they're well on their way. Every time I get a compliment on my Vienna shoes, which is like every single time I wear them, I'm always happy to share that they're made from recycled plastic bottles. Every pair of their shoes is made from six plastic bottles that are rescued from the ocean, chipped into flakes, and then extruded into threads that go through their 3D knitting machine. Their rubber soles are not only super grippy and flexible for comfort, but they're also carbon neutral. Because the majority of Avaya shoes are machine washable, they also last longer, which is inherently good for the environment. Their packaging is also made from recycled cardboard. And finally, they're a US company, but their factory is in China. The website says they picked this factor because of their quality, price, efficiency, positive environmental impact, their use of renewable energy, working conditions, employee treatment, and the majority of actual production is actually done with machines. So presumably there's no uh, you know, unfair wage issues. Now on their website, they go into quite a bit of detail about why they chose to produce these shoes in China. And to be honest, I'm all for it, if it's true. But it's also hard to substantiate and Vivaya also doesn't seem to belong to any accountability organizations like the Fair Wear Foundation. So I hope to see this change over time because I love to support companies with strong sustainability policies that use eco-friendly materials and practices, they provide cost-effective value, and they help me feel good about my purchases. With four pairs of Vivaya shoes, I now travel with and wear almost exclusively Vivaya shoes, and honestly, I adore them. This has been a marathon of a video, so if you're still with me, it inevitably means you've gotten some value from it, so please do like this video, leave a comment with your thoughts, subscribe to my channel, and click the links in the description to shop for your own Vivaya shoes. I hope you love them as much as I do. I'm Nora Dunn, aka The Professional Hobo. Thanks for watching.